this is the May June 2018 paper. It's the second paper. If you look at the proposed timetable, um, you've got two separate categories. Obviously, you guys are the registered students, so you'd be doing question one, question two, question three, question four, and question seven. Those are the questions that you are required to do. Um, obviously, if you're a supplementary student, then you would do slightly different questions because um, the course was a bit different uh, before they made the changes. Okay, so let's look at the first question. Cash journals, bank statements, uh, well, bank recon, and bank account, 21 marks, 25 minutes. Let's see, what do we have here? The required, complete the following in the accounting records. They want the receipts and the payments. Uh, they also want the general ledger T account, and they want the bank reconciliation statement, the debit and the credits. Okay, so did they give you answer sheets here? Yes, they did. So you would literally just complete it on that. Uh, let's go and record all the line items. What do you mean bad question? So that's one, that's two, and we've recorded it. 5015, that's perfect. Number three, the following appeared on the bank statement, but in the cash journal, these are adjustments. The service fee, the internet fee, and the cash deposit fee, those are all bank charges, that'll go here. Annual, okay, service fee, internet, cash deposit. Five, five, one, two, five, and four, eight, five. Adjustments. That's done. A deposit on the twenty fifth of September of nine one two zero oh from Purple, a client, paid directly into the bank account of um, Ag Agripa Attorneys for fees charged. Okay, so this was a direct deposit. It's on the bank statement. It's not in our books. So it needs to be in the CRJ. This would have been fee income. You can even write the client's name, purple, if you want to. How much was it? 9120. Okay, we've looked at that. Debit order of 650 in, in favor of the insurance company for a premium. C 
PJ Insurance. Six fifty. Right, then you've got point number four, which says the funding appeared in the cash journals, but not in the bank statements. Check number fifty six issued to the municipality on twenty fifth of September, twenty seventeen. What month are we reconciling for? Thirtieth of September, twenty seventeen. So 2017, this is for 2017, and that is for water and electricity. Then you had 30th of September, 2017. So both of these are outstanding checks because they appear in the journal, not in the bank statements. Outstanding checks, 56 and well, this is an outstanding check, and that's an outstanding deposit. Okay, so outstanding check, 56, and that was for 1958. Then you had an outstanding deposit, 28,500. that we can look at the next bit. The bank recon statement for the month of August revealed the following. Check 32 to A on 15th of March 2017. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, that's seven months. This would be stale. Right, they've even given you a note there about it. Check 32 is stale. Stale checks always go here. They'll check 6852. Then you've got two other checks. This was on July and that was in August. These are checks that were on the recon. All the other items of the bank which initiated for the month were cleared. Okay, so were cleared, meaning you ticked it and you ticked it. Okay, they're not outstanding because you had cleared those checks. Alright, so you don't have to do anything there. Number six. A client made an EFT of that amount as a payment on his account. The bookkeeper incorrectly entered the amount as 2250 in the business cash receipts journal. Right, so this was the CRJ amount, but you recorded that. So do I need to record more or less? I need to record more. The difference is what we're going to record here as being an amount for Eddie. Corrected. 2520 minus 2250. 2520 minus 2250 gives you 270. Tick that one. A check for 4750 drawn by another client of the bank was erroneously entered in the bank account of A. Um, this was a check. It was drawn by another client of the bank. So it's not your check, it's someone else's. That's a bank error. was for another client 4750 4750 incorrect debits and number eight a deposit of 11300 made on the 27th of September from a client for a divorce case was erroneously recorded in the business cash receipts journal instead of the trust receipts journal. Okay, so this was incorrectly recorded as a business receipt when it should have been a client receipt. So how do you get rid of a business cash receipt? By processing a payment. Right, so incorrect receipt for the trust creditors that was for 11300 then you sum up the left and the right, the debits and the credits. And then I'll have total receipts. Cash receipts journal. Total payments. Cash payments journal. And I'll reference those figures from above. Okay, then our balance, this side looks bigger. 
add two amounts together, get that total, work out the balancing figure, which is this total minus that amount, gives you that balance brought down, or carry down brought down. that's the balance. If we look at this, which side's bigger here? This side's bigger. Credit side's bigger. So if I sum up all of the credits, I get that. And then the difference would have been this minus that. So does this balance? Uh, 3, 6. What's the difference? Let's check. This minus that gives you 4, 8, 7, 0. Oh. Uh, did they s did they say what was wrong with the question? Yeah, um, so they didn't correct it, right? They didn't say, say anything. Wow. Okay. Lucky for them. Right. So yeah, those balances don't balance. It's four eight seven zero, oh. four eight seven zero. Oh. If I add these two amounts together, what do I get? Three five. 3560 plus 18850. Uh, one, one oh. That gives you 5410. Oh. Let's see that what the difference is here. 540. Is there a 540 anywhere? No, I didn't see a 540. Yeah, there's definitely a problem with the question. Uh, unless they can correct it for us, we wouldn't be able to. Okay. Right, so yeah, that's as is. So just a note. This. Bank recon does not balance. Yeah, that's a pretty big mistake on their part. Right, so that's the first one. Let's go back to the proposed timetable. Okay, so one we've looked at. Trust transfers, correspondence, and theory trust investments. We'll leave that for um last. Okay, let's do the accounting equation one. Banked easy marks. Okay, this was 21 marks. This was 25 marks. So that's 46. Okay, you've almost passed the exam if you've got 46. Question seven. It's been a while since we did, a, did an accounting equation. There's question seven. Okay, question seven needs to be answered in this format. Date, debit, credit, and then assets equal owner's equity plus liabilities. Okay, so question seven. So there's my formats. This is practicing your basics in terms of rules. They say it must be answered on page 24. Um, columns in respect of the accounting equation must not be total, so you don't have to add up anything. And we just need to record things as is. Number one, issued an invoice to P for services rendered. That's important. And if you're issuing an invoice, they're a debtor. They haven't paid you. So debit the debtors. Asset increase, credit the services rendered. Income increase. Oh, the color faded. It's just so good. Oh, there it is. Okay. Right. How do I record that? Well, 4,500, assets increase, so plus 4,500. Services rendered is income. Income will increase owner's equity. There's the first one. Number two. 
issued a check for the cash flows. If you're issuing a check, you're decreasing bank and you're increasing petty cash. So debit the petty cash. Credit the bank. Petty cash and bank are both assets, so you'll have plus and minus 1,300. Okay, day four, an error occurred during August, a deposit of that amount received from a client for future services was incorrectly recorded in the business cash receipts journal instead of the trust cash receipts journal and posted as such to the general ledger account. This error must still be corrected. Okay, so you had a deposit from a client that was incorrectly recorded in the business cash receipts journal. Right, so if you incorrectly record in the business cash receipts journal, what would you have done? Well, business, CRJ, you would have debited the bank, credited the debtors. That's what you would have done. This was actually for a client. Trust cash receipts journal. So you should have trust cash receipts journal. You should have debited the trust bank account. And credit the trust creditors. Right, so looking at this, I need to reverse out the mistake and then process the correction. Right, so there are two parts to this one. First part would be undoing what you did previously. So if you debited the bank, you need to credit the bank. And if you credit to the debtors, you'll have to debit the debtors. Fifteen, three fifty. Plus and minus. And then you need to process the correct entry, which would have been this. Debit to trust creditors, credit to trust, uh, debit, trust bank, credit trust creditors. How much? Fifty. My ability to go up. Next, a client who owed P paid the account. Right, it's a client, so client control account, okay, or debtors, and they paid the amount. So if your client is paying you, you're receiving. So that would have been to a general journal. Okay, or a cash receipt, depending on how you're capturing it. I'll use cash receipts here because this was a receipt. Terms of working four seven eight zero. Oh. 
command control decreases, so copy paste, make it zero. Four seven eight zero. Another one complete. Right, eleven paid courier and postage costs of three fifty out of the petty cash. So the petty cash would decrease. Distribution cost maybe. It's going to use courier and postage. Expense. Increase. The expense is going up, so if the expense goes up, it's going to affect owner's equity negatively. So negative 350. Petty cash is decreasing, so negative 350. If you're paying water electricity, bank will be affected. Water electricity is an expense. One, three, three, five. Purchase two wooden desks and six chairs from office furniture on credits. You purchase desks and chairs for the office. It's furniture. We're not selling desks and chairs. This was on credit, so on credit means creditors. Last one, 29. Bank returned the check from G, referred to 7. The client did not have sufficient funds in the bank account. That's a dishonored check. Dishonored checks always go to the CPJ, so this would have been a cash payment on the last day. You would reverse out a receipt. So by doing that, you would have, the client did not have sufficient funds, so you would have reduced the client, so you would have credited the debtors. received from a client. The bank returned to check number re received from a client. Uh, this was a payment of an outstanding debt. So you'd have to reinstate his account. Okay, I'll refer to that one. So 4780. 4780. The details for this would have been it's insufficient it was entered into the check um, because this was received from a client to debtors. I need to put the amounts in here. 
the wooden discs, 35,400. Uh, this would have been increased, so plus 47,000. 30, uh, what is it, 35, yeah, 35,400. Liabilities increase. Trade payables increase. And the last one is your debtors, uh, which was bad debt. Well, not bad debt, dishonored checks. Uh, a dishonored check would always go to the CPJ, which would affect these two accounts, debtors and bank. Okay, I'll copy paste, change that acronym, or not acronym, the details. Okay, bank. How much was that? Refer to number seven, four seven eight zero. Oh. Plus and minus. Four seven eight zero. Oh. And that's it. Not too bad. Save. That's another question. Did any of you just hit a pile? see a mistake that they've made um, somewhere in the question. Okay, and that's it. Now we've recovered that. Uh, let's go back. Now we've ticked those two. Right, so now we've got three sections. Trust transfers, correspondence and theory, and then trust investments. So let's look at the first one. I'm just going to go in order here. Question two. transfers. Let's go read it. I can see why it took so long to print. There's a lot of answer sheets. Okay, so you're lucky in that sense that you don't have to worry about the templates. Um, it'll be given. All you've got to do is just apply your knowledge of the rules and the different um, topics and then you'll be able to get it. Okay, so for 23 marks, what are they asking me to do? always important. Open the foreign ledger account in the general ledger of L as at that date and post the subsidiary journals in addition information one and two above in those ledger accounts. So in other words, the trust bank accounts will be affected and the trust creditors account will be affected. Do you agree those two are kind of like mirror images of each other? Okay, because the one is the client's actual money and the other is, well, how much of the client's money do you still owe them okay, as, a, as a liability. Please note all accounts must be properly balanced off. Commence uh, the general ledger with the following opening balance as given in the trial balance above. Question must be answered on question 8. Okay, then question 6 is a totally different question. So let's finish off the disclosure. Okay, so let's go down on items. Trial balance of um, lewd Fick attorneys on 30th of June, the business bank account. Is the business bank account going to change? It can change. Why? Whose record is it? Exactly. So you can adjust what's in the trial balance. Okay. A and B. Trust bank accounts. In the subsidiary journals. So open the ledger accounts in the general ledger of L as at and post to the subsidiary journals in addition information one and two. Please 
major account. Okay, so if you look at the answer sheet there, it's just two T accounts. Okay, trust bank and trust creditors. That's it. So if you're opening the ledger accounts as at 31st of July, you need opening balances. Those are easy marks. You can take that straight out of the question. Trust Bank 7140. That's a debit balance. It's looking good. They also wanted the trade creditors. Yes. So you don't have to show every single person separately. You can group them all as one, which is what I'm doing here. So I'll still have a balance, but I'll have it on this side because trust creditors is seen as a liability. In terms of a total, you would have to add up all three liabilities together. So let's go back and have a look. We've got which partners do we need to add? These two, A and R. That's the opening balance, right? That came from June. June, end of June, it's beginning of July. Six, seven, four, zero. Plus four, six, three hundred. Seven, four, uh, oh, six, four, and four, six, three. Okay, the second one was right. Four, six, three, oh, four, six, three, oh, six, seven, four, zero, six, seven, four, zero. Okay, let's just copy that now. Okay, group two. Right, that's the trust creditors. got journals. The trust cash receipts will affect the trust creditors. So this would affect that because of the trust bank accounts. Three five eight zero three five eight zero. All right, so now I've looked at that one. Trust cash payments journal. This will affect my trust creditors because I'm paying nine six three zero. Oh. Reduce your bank. And they would reduce your bank. 
Mutual Trust Credit Service. Let's tick that. Uh, let's check the next one. Business Cash Payments Journal. Was I asked for a business CPJ? No, I wasn't, so I don't need to worry about that. Then I've got the Fees Journal. Was I asked for that? Trust Bank, Trust Creditors. No, I wasn't. That was all. Just Trust Bank and Trust Creditors. That's it. Okay, so nothing there. Number two, including the amount received from R in the trust cash receipts journal is 1000 as a deposit for a different matter still to be finalized in the following three months so that would have been something that was earmarked for something specific that wouldn't apply to the T accounts okay the T accounts record everything as is so that's actually it that's what you would that's what you would do you would then just balance off Which side's bigger here? This side. And you'll see it's exactly the same down here at the bottom. It has to be because trust bank is basically the money that you are still um, holding that's the clients. Okay. Uh, this balance. Trust creditors. Well, you had two here. Trust bank and the trust creditors. Uh, yeah, but there is no trust creditors total here. It's a mistake. because um, unless they have a specific amount here. Yeah, so example wise, um, your trust creditors need to equal your trust bank because they're the same account basically. Trust creditors and trust bank need to be the same. So actually this is another error. All right, if you add up all your trust creditors, there's one, there's another, I don't get the same figure. I should, but I don't. Okay, so there is a problem here. Uh, the these two amounts do not add up or do not uh, correspond. They have to. They don't. That's a problem. So yeah. So th this was actually not a very good past paper, looking at the number of errors that were made. Okay, so it wasn't only the bank, it wasn't only the bank um, recon that had a mistake, it was also the T accounts. Okay, I think they probably tried to change the first paper and they probably made mistakes doing it because this looked very similar to last week's. Let's have a look. Yes. Very similar. Let's open up last week's answer. Let's look at question two. See, here's the trust bank account. There's the trust bank account from last week, 6390. If we look at this week's, it was what? Uh, 7140. So they changed that one figure. The trust creditors balance was that and that. Okay, those are two separate. They should add up, but they don't. Okay, so maybe they haven't given you all the information. It's possible. Okay, you know that that, that that does need to add up, but it doesn't in this particular case. Okay, it's fine. We're still going to balance it off uh, because this was also looking at transfers. This was, OK, 
paper two. This is paper one. Uh, this is paper two. Yes, this is the one we're looking at. Okay, so I'm going to leave everything as is. Obviously, these two don't correspond, but they should have. Okay, so I added those two amounts. just an extract they don't say that but they should have okay this would have been an extract from that account right the, the reason why is because you don't have all the creditors here and you've only got information relating to some of them um, and then later on you'll have to look at what can you transfer what can't you transfer okay but yeah let's just keep it as is and let's just carry on going through the um, steps so we've looked at the journals balance this off this side was bigger so the balance here would be the 14 minus the 9 carry it down brought down trust bank is an asset so it will be on the opposite side Okay, so that's the trust creditors and trust bank. That was A. For B, calculate the amount that should be transferred from the trust bank account to the business bank account of uh, Ludwig attorneys for August. Okay, for only two partners though, G and R. After all the information given in the question has been taken into consideration. Right, do you have a choice here? You can either complete it on the exam paper using the ledger, which is page 10 and 11, or as it'll appear in the accounting records of L. Okay, based on that table. So yeah, there's the one answer, there's the trust bank, there's the trust creditors, and there's the table. Or the T accounts. Okay, firstly, stick to the T accounts, easier, because you only need to study rules, and then we just need to apply it. So I am going to create two accounts, one account for G and one account for R, right? Those are the two, yes. Okay, so let's copy-paste. Is it G Gunty or is it A Gunty? They say G, but there's only an A. Right? Um, that's the client. So I, I think that's another typo. Okay. Uh, see, here's A Gunty. There's a G Gapola. But Gapola's a client, but a client that hasn't give us, given us any money. Yeah, I also think it's A Gunty. Okay, not G Gunty. So, yeah, let's just cross this out and just make it an A. And then R is fine. So, let's put it here. A Gunty and R may ring. Okay, both of these are clients. Okay, that's what they said here. Transfer to the trust bank account, to business bank account, after all the information has been taken into consideration. Okay, so those two accounts are, inverted commas, trust creditor accounts.
So both of these will have a balance over here. Because they're liabilities. Okay, so let's go to the question and let's get the easy marks. A Gunty had six seven four O and the other guy had four six three O. That's it. Okay, there's the opening balances. Right, then we need to go back and we just need to put this in. So there, Gunty and, and, and R, A and R. A here, trust receipts goes up, so one, two, three, O. Oh. And the other guy gave two, three, five, O. Oh. That would have been Trust Bank. Okay, then they also made payments. Ganti and uh, Mayring. Okay, so 5730 is going to come off A. 5730 and M39. That would have also been Trust Bank, but a CPJ figure. CPJ. Anything else here that relates to Gunty? Yes, fees journal. Okay, with the fees journal, what happens there? Well, you're charging the client, so you would have debited the client and you would have credited the fees because the fees would be seen as income and Gunty is your client. Okay, so asset go up, income go up. Right, so this you wouldn't actually need for those two accounts. Okay, what is important here is this. This 1,000 was an amount that was earmarked for something specific in the future. So you cannot transfer anything to your bank account. Right, so if I look at the trust bank account, here's the trust bank account. How much money is sitting in the trust bank account? 1090. Zero. Okay, 1090 zero zero is the funds that are available in the trust bank account. Okay, then if I'm looking at the clients, Gunty and Mayring, you are going to have to balance their accounts off before the transfer. There's Gunty's balance. Okay, NB, check the transfer rules. So in, in some instances you can transfer, in other instances you cannot. You just need to know when you can and when you can't. Um, the the 1,000 here is very important because they told you this was kept aside for something specific in the future. So let's balance May Ring's account off. Those two amounts added together, that's the bigger side. Okay, so 698 and then 698 minus 39 gives you a balance brought down of 3080. The question said, calculate the amount that should be transferred. There's the important bit. Transferred from the trust bank account to the business bank account. All right, so if I'm looking at Gunty, okay, how much does Gunty have here? 2240. That's in the trust creditors account. In Mary's account, you've got 3080. Okay, so with Mayring, May you're going to have to less. 1,000, because 1,000 was earmarked for something specific that was written here. Okay, 
So in terms of a transfer, the possible transfer here would be this minus that. Uh, well, a thousand gives you two thousand and eighty. Right, the other guy had how much? Two thousand two hundred and forty. How much money is actually sitting in the trust account? One zero nine zero. So you would be limited to that for those two line items. Um, so you wouldn't be able to transfer anything over because you don't have enough funds. Okay, the trust bank account represents the amount of money that you have available that you can transfer to your to your bank account. Okay, so if we're looking at calculate the amount that should be transferred from the trust bank account to the business bank account, after all information given in the question ab above has been taken into account. So having looked at everything here. here let's highlight this in the trust bank account that's the amount of money that's sitting there if you add up those two figures you don't see the you don't see the same figure okay they're different right, because there are probably other clients that they haven't taken into consideration here in order to get the total okay so looking at the transfer here this would be limited to or limited transfer in terms of the rules. Okay, you wouldn't be able to transfer more than that. But is there enough money in the accounts? No, there isn't. Right, is it possible to transfer two two? And twenty thousand and eighty. No, it's not. It's not possible. Because you're limited by this. How much money is actually sitting in the trust bank account? Okay. Yeah, the examples in the textbook are actually better. This paper's not very good. Okay, it doesn't make sense because things aren't balancing. This trust bank account balance, that balance, should have been equal to these balances here. Okay, or or greater than. Either or. Okay. Uh, looking at this, I can't actually answer this question because they say calculate the amount that should be transferred from the trust bank account to the business bank account. Well, looking at what we've got here, okay, two two four is how much money is still owed to Ganti. And 3,080 is how much money you still owe to Mayron, yes, okay. So having looked at that, you would be limited to this, 1090. 1090 bracket, trust bank. paying it's about transferring so you would want to transfer money in the trust bank account to your bank account based on those balances okay so this balance here obviously has a total of 3080 and part of it was earmarked for something specific that's why I list the 1000 okay if I list the 1000 I get 2080 that 2080 is the current balance that Mayring has at the business that is his. Okay. And if you had to insert that onto this table, trust creditor account balance before transfer, if it's before transfer, you would write down those balances. See? This is before transfer. 2240. Gunty, Mayring 3080. Uh, wrong side.
trust creditors to 240. For Mayring, it was, what was it? It was 3080. Trust funds earmarked for the future matters that you can include. So Mayring has 1,000. Minus 1,000. In accounting, you show negatives in brackets. Account balance for the current matters. Debit balance on the trust creditor account to be transferred. Null, 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 null. Trust creditor account balance before fees. Same balance. Yeah, but 3,018 less 1,000 because that was earmarked. Uh, yes, 2,080, yes. So it was 3, now it's minus 1, so now it's 2. Fees charged, nothing, 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 nothing. Transfer funds in respect of uh, fees to business accounts. Transfer funds in respect of fees to the business accounts. Um, this is a transfer of funds. I would have a limitation here and there was no transfer of funds due to fees so that would also be zero trust creditor account balance payments from the business bank account on behalf of the trust creditor there were none final balance on the trust creditor's account well that's what it would be at the end total transfer to business bank account. Is there a total transfer to the business bank account? No. There was none. Okay, because if I look at the workings, the trust bank account has 1,090. It's impossible to transfer more than 1,090 from the clients to your business because you need to send them out. Okay, or you need more than, but even if it was more than, um, the amount would still have to reconcile. Okay. okay, then we've got B. Uh, let's go back to the, oh, we've done B actually. B was two options. You had this option which we looked at, and you had this option, which was drawing up the T accounts. Okay, so that's actually fine. See, there's Gun T and Mary. They also looked at the client, the client ledger, their fees. Okay, uh, I didn't look at the fees here. If you did look at the fees, then you would just have one line item, because they only gave you fees journal. That's it. Here's it here. Uh, I'll show it to you. There's it there. Fees journal. Right, so it is worthwhile showing that, but there's not much else that you're going to show other than that. The client control balance. Uh, the client control account is the debtors account, it's the asset account. Okay. Uh, what do you mean this? balance yes of course yeah the client control and the client ledger well that's if they asked for it did they no not for trust creditors and for trust bank oh uh, where do you see client ledger here B just said calculate the amounts must be transferred that's all if you had to do it, if you had to do it and you were going to draw up a client ledger, then yes, the client ledger would just be a list of all the clients. Yeah, the client's ledger. Then you would have to show each client. Uh, under B, B said, calculate. Yeah, I see it in the T accounts. I see that as well, but they didn't ask for it. 
calculate the amount that should be transferred from the trust bank account to the business bank account of Ludwig Attorneys um, for, for G for M after all the information has taken into consideration. So what you could do is you could drop those other accounts as well because it is given and then you could just say, well, in terms of fees, how much fees do they owe us? Yeah. Okay, so that, that would be something additional that you could work out here um, in terms of the transfer. So if we do that, then we would show the opposite, basically. So this would have been client control accounts. And if it's a client control account, the balance will go this side. Okay, so if we did those accounts, then you would have shown this. Uh, Gunti had 2230. Mayring had 2100. Were there additional fees? Yes, there were. There's the additional fees. 19400 for A. Well, 1940. And 3580. That would have been a fees income line item. General journal. Or fees journal. FJ. Right. The balance here would literally just be the total. So I'm just going to write down the total. Sum up those two amounts. You get that. Some of those two amounts, and you get that. You have questions? You could balance carry down, balance brought down, but then it would just be a zero on the one side. trust creditors for the trust creditors this was for the client control yeah so trust creditors there's trust creditors that's the right balance for the trust creditors that's the right balance for the trust creditors no you can't okay because trust creditors is trust creditors okay what what they're saying here is that in terms of fees how much fees does this client owe you This client owes us 4170. Okay. Um, they have, how much does Gunti have? 2240. In terms of the trust creditors. Okay. So you could actually do a bit more workings here at the bottom looking at this because this is looking at the fee story. Okay, but the trust creditors thing still doesn't balance because the trust, the total trust bank account only had that figure. And then you had two, you had two clients with more than that. Okay, so if we're discussing what they could transfer in terms of fees, well, if you look at this, you could say, how much does, does, does AG owe you? in fees 4170 they owe us this they owe us these fees does that make sense okay so if they're owing you those fees you could compare that to the trust creditors the individual account if you look at the individual trust creditors account AG Gunti had 2240. That's what they had. Okay, but the 2240 did not match with the total trust bank figure. Uh, 
uh, yes, because you need to look at how much do they owe you in terms of fees. So how much does this person owe us in terms of fees? 4,170. Which is this? So they credit this, and then debit that. Uh, what page is it? I've got it up here. Okay. Yeah, this was that example with stain, eh? Okay. So see, this, these examples are better because these examples are correct if you look at the total. See, have a look at this total. Let me circle this. Okay, if you look at this trust bank balance, that bank balance, this balance needs to match with the client's uh, trust credits is there, that. That needs to happen. Okay, so does that apply to this past paper question? No, it doesn't. Okay, that's the first problem. Okay, problem number one here, this trust bank account balance was that. That bank balance does not tally up to what we have there in the individual trust accounts. That's problem number one. Okay. All right, so that's the first part. Those two figures will always match because whatever you get from your client is a liability in your books. Right? Okay, so this and that needs to always match. Has to. Okay, so that's the first issue with this question. There's the trust bank account. This balance did not match with those individual accounts. Okay. Right, then if you look at the client control account, this is like your debtors, similar to your debtors. Right, this would affect your fees journal. Right, so when you look at your client control account, the client control account, this tells me that clients are owing us fees to the value of 10960 Okay, those are the fees. If I then look at my trust creditors, do the trust creditors have enough money sitting in their bank accounts? Yes. So would it be possible to transfer money from the trust bank to the business bank? Yes but it will be limited to this, how much fees you're entitled to. Yeah, that's the theory stuff. Okay, um, something else to consider is the, um, we looked at that, oh, the, yes, this. These ones. that's the transfer. Yeah, that's the transfer. Uh, no, you can't. Why? Hey? Uh, no, last week we did it because this was more. Okay, the problem is this. Remember, um, you cannot transfer more than what's in the trust bank account. If it's less, then everything would be limited to that. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The problem with this um, question is this and that should have added up to this then it would have been okay. Right, then you could say that those amounts, because that's what I'm trying to say with these uh, word wording here. I'm, I'm writing this whole statement down, okay? So your understanding is correct. If I look at this, this is the amount of fees that the client is owing us, okay? This would be limited to, in terms of transfer, to what's sitting in their account, which is that, the 2240. Okay, so you would be able to transfer 2240 had there been more sitting in the trust bank accounts. 
definitely. Yeah. Okay, so um, these examples are complete. Okay, the reason why that's there is because if you look at this client's ledger, what was their balance before the transfer? There. There's the balance before the transfer. Okay, 4440. Four, right. But if you look at Nkorsi's trust creditors, there's Nkorsi's trust creditors. Okay, so have a look at that. This is the money that's the client that's sitting with the business. This is the fees that the business is entitled to from the clients. Okay, so you cannot transfer more than what the client has in terms of money in the bank accounts. Well, remember the rules state that you are allowed to transfer money from the client's bank account, so from the trust bank to the business bank, so long as you meet all those bullets, those requirements. Okay, so one of the requirements is you cannot take more than what's here because this is the money that's actually in the account. I can't transfer 4440 from the trust bank to the business bank because you don't have enough funds in the bank account. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's quite logical in terms of reasoning. but um, So these examples in the study guide are perfect because everything works out well. Okay, the totals match those individual accounts. Okay, the first paper as well. That last week there wasn't anything wrong with the with this question. Um, obviously they probably tried to change the paper one to make a paper two, and then they made a bit of a mess of it. Okay, right, because you can clearly see here that this balance doesn't match those individual balances. Okay, so yeah, uh, paper two is not looking good at all from an um, accuracy point of view. Okay, last week's paper was fine. Um, it, it, that last question that we spent quite some time working, uh, some of you left a bit early, but of uh, course you stayed for the whole thing. Uh, that was a quite a long, tough one because you had to consider all the different figures. Okay, and that's why we looked at the theory as well, just to... Yeah. Well, oh, okay, great. Stacy sent it to you guys. Okay, great. All right, so let's see. We've covered um, that bit. Okay, so I can't actually answer this unless I know for sure how much is sitting in the bank accounts. So that's why I'm saying that. Okay, then I would say the same thing here. So let's just summarize the, the understanding here. So Mayring. Okay, if I look at Mayring, Mayring has fees of 5680. Okay, this would be limited to how much money is sitting in Mayring's account, which is what? The 3080, but that's limited to 2080 because of that earmarked funds or something else. Okay, 2080. So assuming that the trust bank account had 2080, which it doesn't, but let's say it did, then I would be able to transfer 2080 to the client's control. Okay, remove it and then give it to the business, basically. Okay. Right, so we would literally write the same thing there. They owe us these fees. Compare, compare that to the trust creditors. 3080 less 1000 equals 2080. Do not match with the total trust bank. Anything else here? No, that was it, eh? Yes. Okay, let's check the correspondence and see how that's, um, how, how did that go in terms of the uh, paper two? compared to the paper one. Right, so question three is short compared to the one last week. Here they said, part A, complete the above account statement on the 
statement itself, okay? And then B, complete all entries as reflected in the account statement in the following accounting records. Um, they want the journal and they want the ledger. What else? That's it. And then they've given you the answer sheet. Okay, so there's the answer sheets for the questions. Okay, that was part A. Okay, so let's look at the scenario. Um, Al and Sons attorneys instructed uh, Corsi attorneys to assist with an insurance claim okay, on behalf of the client Malloy. So now, if we're looking at this, they're the instructed attorney. And they're the instructing attorneys. Right, so if I'm looking at the instructed attorney, the instructed attorney has been told to do something. Okay, so if they've been asked to do something, then the instructing attorneys is kind of like their clients. Okay, because you've been asked to do something. It's like it's like Malloy asking Sun, okay, Al and Sun to do something. Okay, so the instructing attorney is asking them to do something. So uh, Corsi would be looking at the instructing attorney like their clients. Right, so they would give them an account statement because this is their account statement. So they've given this account statement. Um, maybe just to go back and reference this. Uh, this was page one, was it 150 or something around there? It was the last, se the last section. Yeah, this was the, okay, just, a bit okay, just slightly after, it's 156. There's it. Okay, so if you look at this, this one third, so let's just highlight this bit. That one third allowance is limited to that that whole ten percent story. Okay? And it was one thousand per per collection. Right. So there was a ten percent limitation or restriction that you have to comply with. Here's it there. Let's see collection fees entitled to 10% of all money collected by him or her. Obviously limited to 1,000. Okay, so let's work that out. Your share of the fees or allowance. Okay, when looking at collection fees, it's 10% of all money collected by him or her with the limit of 1,000 per collection. That's what they've looked at here. Right, so if you look at this, what did they collect? In this example, it was seven, 750. Okay, what is 10% of 750? 75. Right, there is no 1,000 restriction there. Okay, in this one, how much did you collect? Fees for receiving instruction. Um, okay, even the, the, this is what? Um, okay, fees for receiving instruction. Co correspondence. Fees for receiving instruction. How much did they actually collect from the insurance claim? See, the question mark is what was the proceeds from the claim? You see what I'm saying? How much did they actually receive? See, they haven't got a divorce here. This is not a divorce. This is an insurance claim. Right, so if this was a correct statement, there should have been an amount here for the insurance claim. Do you agree? Okay, how much did you get from the insurance company? Okay, this is fees for receiving the instruction. That's something different. Those are advocate fees and those are correspondence fees. Okay, your share of the fees or allowance, okay, that would be based on those figures. Okay, we will go back and look at that. Right, but we can't work out the 10%, so the collection. Um, in this particular statement, there is no collection here, a collection fee. Okay, because you were asked to collect, assist with insurance claim disputes. Okay, so the claim could have had proceeds here, and then there would have been a collection fee. Right, if there isn't any collection, okay, so you didn't actually collect the insurance claim, well then this would have been just, inverted commas, work that was done. Okay, 
if it's just work that was done, then you don't have to worry about the collection. You only have to worry about this. Okay, the one third of your share of the fees. Right, so looking at that, okay, in this example, what fees do we have here? Well, we've got the instruction, okay? We've got the 11, we've got the 16, we've got the 10. Uh, the share of fees. I think in this particular example, the share of fees was paid by the uh, by the company, the instructing attorneys. Yeah. Right. Then you had the collection fees here, which was 75. Okay. So all of those added together, which was the 11, the 16, and the 75. Okay. 11 plus 16 plus 75. Okay, they've actually shown the working here. It's, it's, it's even there. There's it there. Um, so we need to look at what fees do they actually need to pay. So if I look at this example, did they mention anything here about fees that will be taken on by the instructing attorney? No, they didn't. Right, so then we would assume that all of these fees would have been part of the actual um, total. Okay, so your share of the fees would be one third of the total fees, which was the four three three zero. Right, unless they specifically said that certain fees would have been um, would have been covered by the instructing attorney. Okay, so one third of four comma four three. This one, question three. 1 over 3 times 4330 equals uh, 4330 divided by 3 equals that. This is the share of the fees. Okay, so none of it was covered by the instructing attorney. Okay, then we need to look at the amount due. Right, so again, just to relate that, relate that to this. Um, when you look at the amount due, which is this line, the check. Okay, this 657, this 657, when looking at the amount due, is calculated taking those um, three things into consideration. It's this, the total 750, which is the fees, okay, and then you've the transfer, which is the um, the 93. The 93 in this example was the 25 and the 68, which is amounts that were paid by the business, okay, the instructing attorney. So if the instructing attorney is going to be paying anything, like they did in this example, then that would be part of the business cash receipts journal. Okay, that would be the 93. 68 plus 25 gave us the 93. That doesn't apply in this scenario. The fees does apply in this scenario though. So when looking at 68, in this example, you've got one third of the fees, which was, what was it, 14? 1443. 1443, three. So if I'm looking at the amount due, it would have to balance it off so it would be the difference. So 4330, the difference would be 4330 less that. No, the limitation on the thousand is only for the collection, not for the share of your fees. Yeah, um, the collection is, is, the collection has the 10% um, and 1000 limitation. So the difference here is what you would record there. Okay, what is it? Two, two eight six six, two eight eight six, comma six seven, six six seven. Right, and then that would balance. Right, if we had to record this in the actual um, subsidiary journal, 
once we've got that, then we can actually look at those amounts. So general journal here. Uh, this is Al and Sons. This was the advocate fees. Advocate fees outstanding. Okay, so if we go back and we look at it. Advocate fees, 2,500. So those are the advocate fees. Then we've got correspondence fees and we've got the fees for receiving instruction. Um, this is looking at the fee that were outstanding. Any fees outstanding here? Uh, let's just go back and reference this so we can check the correct amounts. Uh, this was a, a fee that was outstanding. There wasn't anything outstanding here. There was no additional information here. Your answers must comply with the Legal Practice Act. And that was it, yes. Okay, so if I've got amount due, okay, the amount due is the amount that's outstanding. So 2886,66. Amount due, 2886,66. In terms of the fees journal, the share of the fees was the 133. 133, comma, uh, 1443, comma, 33. 1443, comma, 33. That would be the share of the fees, 144, 3, 3, 3. Right, and then the total fees charged, in terms of Mr. Malloy, the total fees charged was, uh, what is the total? journal debits would have been the 144 and then the total would have been the 33 three, yeah okay so that would have been the 144 3 comma 3 and then the total would be the 4330 and then that would balance 4330 fees account, which is L and Sons, which is the client, that would have had 1443. Okay. Right, that should be similar to one of the ones that we've seen before. Let's have a look. Where's the client? Uh, there's the client. Yeah, see? The total, and then you've split it up into the fees and the transfer. Okay, the, the amount that's due, the amount that's payable. Okay, it's very similar. If you look at this, um, that was the amount that was due or the amount that's payable. Okay, so the amount and that amount go together. Okay, so have we finished that one? Yes. Okay, is that all right? Okay, so just remember that um, you do need to consider quite a few things with correspondence. Um, the only thing that they didn't cover in this question that they did cover last week was the collection fee. Okay, that 10% 1,000 limitation. 
Okay, here there was no insurance claim that was received, so we're not going to look at that. Okay, if if there was, then you would. So that's why I circled this here. If there was an insurance claim, then you could definitely consider it. Okay, that's obviously not a divorce. Next. This is theory, part B. List the ways in which bank charges in respect of a trust bank account can be dealt with. Total for both parts is five. Well, 13, so it's the five plus the eight from before. Okay, this was out of eight. And this is the five mark question, which is theory. Right, this I'm just gonna give you guys a page reference. Um, you guys can go look at it in the textbook. It's pure theory, bank charges. Bank charges was part of one of the chapters. So if we go back to the study guide, you'll see, if you look at the contents page, bank charges was given to you in the learning unit eight. Right, so if we go to learning unit eight, page 128, you'll see here, they spoke about the bank charges. Okay, this was all those investments that we can skip. That was the example. That was the investment. That was an example. And where is the bank charges? There, in respect of trust money. Okay, now that's a public auditor. Um, This was accounting to clients. This was a copy of the statement. Consequence of non-compliance. This was an appointment of an auditor or a public accountant. This was the back office stuff, keeping documents for at least five years. Uh, let's see. The bank charge. it here, it's further back then. Okay, so this was the section 78 uh, big A, and this was the 86 um, four, this was the 95%, 5% split. Nothing there about bank charge. page 62. What chapter is that? That covers page 62 is part of the bank recon. No, that's part of source documents. Learning unit 4. Page 62. Page 62. There's the bank charges. Okay. Alright, so it's actually not in learning unit 8 then. It's actually learning unit the contents page is incorrect. Yeah, it, we, we covered it, but I uh, can't remember where, but now we've got it. So rather than finding it, this is the bank charges here, yes. Bank charges and interest received on the trust bank account, correct. Okay, so for this one, chapter four actually, page 62.
this must be answered by registered students. Okay, so you guys do need to do this question, question four. The following information was obtained from the accounting records of C attorneys. Okay, you've got the general ledger, you've got the trust bank, you've got the trust creditors. See, this is a good question. So far, it's looking good. Why? Those two are exactly the same. They must be. The trust bank account and the trust creditors have to be the same. Then you've got three clients. If you add up those three figures, you should get the same total, do you? Can someone just quickly add, just on the calculator? Uh, then you've got transactions relating to all of these different scenarios, looking at the investment accounts. You don't. Okay, so if you add up those Is it short by 70,000? Okay. Right, yeah. Uh, the trust creditors, unless there's a client that we don't know about, that's not part of this scenario. Okay, it might not change the, the answer because this is looking at the investment accounts. Okay, what do they want here? They want the, tr uh, the trust cash receipts journal, the trust cash payments journal, and the trust general ledger. Your answer must comply with the requirements of um, the acts obviously and then they gave you the journals here okay so we've looked at similar scenarios before we just need the diagrams okay so let's put here question So what does the first one look at? Well, 1st November, R is in the process of purchasing a business from K. The final price has to be negotiated. C received an additional 25000 from R being part of the estimated purchase price. Okay, that's T, C, R, J. To get on his behalf. He gave a written instruction that the total amount in the trust bank account be invested in an interest bearing fixed deposit account until the final settlement. Uh, C invested the money at V Bank on behalf of R in terms of that. Okay, that's important because then we know what rule to apply. It's the 78 to A, so capital A, this one. There's it. So it's the 100% back to the client. Okay, there's the one. The small a is, uh, the small a not immediately required. Um, yeah, that's not Im immediately required. 86 is the, 86, four is the 95 and five. Yeah, okay, so we need this diagram, okay, for this scenario. Okay, so we go back and we read it. It's capital A. They have received an additional 25,000. Now, remember they said the total amount must be invested. So it's the 25,000 plus however much they've still got for Google Ad 2. Uh, where is their account? There. So it's the 18,500 plus the 25,000 because that was the additional. And then they said the total amount was invested. So if you're looking at the total amount invested, it would have been taken out of the um, amount and been deposited into the account. Okay, so let's get the correct reference for the transfer. Okay, 
there. So we need to write in the reference as well. Okay, so in terms of the receipts and the payments. Okay, the first thing is obviously how much was received. Okay, we've received 25000 from the client. That would have affected the trust creditors. Uh, I'm going to do this on the workings. Debit the trust bank accounts credits the trust creditors okay that was the additional 25,000 this would have gone to the trust cash receipts journal okay so let's record that In the trust cash receipts journal for November, you would have received an additional 25,000. From Google Etsu, RG. That was on the first. Yes, you should. You should. With these, they they, they do want the um, section eighty six four thing. Okay, the eighty six three, the seventy eight two A, or um, so I, I would put that level of detail as well. Uh, but you wouldn't for this one because that was just looking at the additional twenty five. Okay, then the investment part we would. Okay, so we're looking at making investments. So you write down the name, okay, and obviously this was an investment. Okay, this was the cash, uh, the, the trust cash receipts journal, uh, because that was the total that was received. Okay, the trust cash payments journal is what's invested. So you would first have to invest, then you would have to receive. Right, so let's go and do the investment parts. Okay, so we debit the investment asset increase then you would have to credit the trust bank accounts okay because you're taking money from that account how much money are you taking there would be a working here 25,000 plus was it 18,500 okay yeah you've got the question in front uh, perfect yeah that's correct gives me a total. Right, so 43,500 is going to be invested. Um, when we record this, this would have been TCRJ, this would have been TCPJ, and let's record it now. Okay, so these are just the workings. Um, if I go to the answer sheet, which is there, In the trust cash payments, I would have put R, G, I would have put section 78 to capital A, investments. Okay, that should have gone on this line, actually, because then I need to write on that figure. And what is my working? 43500. That's the payment. Okay, let's go back to the question and let's continue reading. Right, so number one we've looked at now. Number two says, the following investments were made in terms of section 86. So there's the 86 now. On a written instruction of B, C invested 50,000 of the money held in trust from him 
in an interest-bearing savings account with Safe Bank. Right, so that's obviously Safe Bank as the investment, and this was an instruction from a client, and this is 86. So when looking at 86, let's go back to our notes. 86 would be this. We've got 86.3, not immediately required, and then 86.4 is where you've got that split. So do we see the words not immediately required here? Well, for this one, yes. This was for who? Which clients? Same clients. How much money does, does Messiah have? 61,500. But then you can't also invest 70. Do you agree? The following investments were made in terms of section 86. On written instruction of B. Messiah. I think so too. Okay, because B has there. B currently has 61,500 sitting in their trust creditors ledger. Okay, so they could invest 50,000. So I do agree that I think, same as what you guys are saying, 68 would be four, and then this one not immediately required would be the 86.3. Okay, this is Credo Attorneys. Remember, Credo Attorneys is investing 70000 of surplus trust funds. So the 70000 could have come from all the partners. Not all the partners, all the clients. Okay, so this 70000 could have come from any one of these clients, but it's just additional because all of the money would be sitting with the law practice. Okay, so that would have been the 86 capital, uh, 86 three. Okay, so let's first do this one, 86.4. 86.4, that's the diagram. Okay, so for 86.4, we're going to invest the money. So we're going to use the same thing as we had previously. We're going to pay, make the investment. Right, so 50,000 was invested. Fifty thousand invested with Safe Bank. Okay, so the investment would have been Safe Bank would have been fifty thousand. We'll put it in just now. Um, and then that comes out of the CPJ. So let's take that and let's go to our answer sheet and put that information in. This was Safe Bank. This was section eighty six four. So in the trust cash payments journal, we will put safe bank. This is a section 86.4. And well, the interest comes later because then you receive all the money. Right, so that's making the investment. Safe bank is getting that investment 50,000 from the business that's coming out of the trust creditors accounts basically okay all right let's go back to the workings let's look at the next part which was the 83 863 okay here's the 863 so I'm going to copy this okay so with 863 this is not immediately required we would have to first make the investment. So again, you would have to record this, 70,000, 70,000, and that would have come out of the trust bank. Okay, so when I make this payment, we need to record that here. Uh, where did we invest this? Can you guys just check on the question? It was a Capitec. Okay, so Capitec. This was a section 86, small uh, 3, okay, 86, 3, 70,000. Okay, now we've got that. 
Right, let's go back to the question. Let's see what else we've got. Right, let's see here. Okay, R and K agreed on a purchase price of 50000 from the business enterprise. C, 1 November. 1 November, okay. C immediately withdrew the investment made on 1st November. V Bank deposited 45000 into C's trust bank account. Okay, so the 45000 was the amount that was deposited back into the trust account from the investment. And that was because this purchase had gone through. Okay, this 50000 is irrelevant because that's looking at the deal that was done. Okay, between those two partners. Uh, not partners, um, well, buy and seller. Okay, the important bit here is the 45000 that's coming from the investment. Okay, so that's going to go into the trust cash receipts journal. Trust cash receipts journal. So here you would have debited the trust bank and you would have credited the investments. And it was the 45,000. Okay, what did we invest initially? Let's go back and see. There we go. See? This was the initial investment. I'm going to highlight these two in one color because they relate to each other. Okay, so you had invested the 25 plus the 18.5, which was the 43.5. Okay, 43.5 is what you had invested. The return on the investment was 45. So the interest is 1,005. Good. Okay, so that, that's something that we need because we need to show the splits. Okay, so now I know where this is going to go. Let's record it. Let's go to our answer. Okay, so I've got the working. Let's get the marks for it. Okay, so this would have come from the bank. What, where did we invest this? V Bank. Okay, so V Bank. Yeah, you'd write the whole thing in. I'm just writing it down. V Bank. This was the 80. Was it, no, it was 86 or 73? Uh, 78, um, 2 capital A. Okay, let's that out. 72, 73, 78. Sorry, 78, capital A. Okay, what came in? 45. Right, then you need to provide for the interest according to the rule. So where was our diagram? Here's it, 72 capital A. 100% back to the client. That's the rule. So everything goes back to the trust creditor, the client. Okay, so um, let's just see the referencing again for that one. That was the trust journal, that was the interest. Okay, this is how they, there. Transfer of interest to the client. There's the description. Okay, so we are going to, in the trust general journal, we are going to debit the, the client's account is gonna go up, so it must be credited. So trust creditors will be credited, debit the investment account, yes. Okay, so that would have been what we had up here. Um, what was it? 40, no, 15,000, not 15,000, 1,500. Okay, so that was VBank. And then you would have credits, trust creditors, uh, 
Um, who was this fool? R R R G. Google it, eh? Okay. One five. Okay, one five needs to go there. One five debits. One five credits. Right. So now we've got the marks for that one. Let's carry on reading. Let's go back. Okay, the last one says, C withdrew the investment made on the second. So now we're looking at this investment. That investment was section 86. So we had two here. We had 86.4 and we had 86.3. Was it only the safe bank one? Let's just check. Okay, you're right. They said C withdrew the investment on the second with Safe Bank and received 52,100. Okay, so same thing applies here. Uh, let's just write down the receipt. So we receive everything. How much did we invest in Safe? Was it 70? 50. Okay, so where's our 50 here? There's our 50. So I'm going to highlight that in the same color. Okay, so the purple there, 50. And then you've got the 50 here. How much came in? 52100. Okay, thanks. 52100. Right, so that's what I'm going to do in the receipts journal. Okay, so let's get the mark for that. In the trust cash receipts journal, I'm going to put in um, the bank, please. Sorry, you guys have the question in front. Safe bank. Okay, so safe. Yes. Five to one hundred. Five to one hundred. Okay, so that's the first part. We've got that bit of information. Then we need to get the interest part. Okay, the interest part would have been according to our diagram. So with 84, we need to split it. See, 95 is the client, 5 is the fidelity fund. Okay, so we need to show that. We need to show that split here. How much is the interest? The interest here would be... 2100. The difference. Because you invested 50,000. Okay. Um, I didn't show working for the other one. I want to show it here quick. Because we had the trust, the general, uh, general journal. Okay. So we had debit the uh, bank, the investment. And then we had credit the trust creditors. Right. And then we showed the interest of 1.5. Okay, I want to do the same thing for this one as a working first. So the investment would be 2-1, and then you would have split it. The trust creditor would have gotten 95% of that. And the 5% would go to the Fidelity Fund. good okay all right so that would be what you would write down so let, let's just get the mark for that one um, debit uh, the bank name safe bank thanks okay so safe section 80 86 4 and then it was the 2,100. And then you had the 1,995 and the 105. And this was for the trust creditor. And this was for the Fidelity Fund.
at the end. Okay, there isn't any more questions. Okay, perfect.